Hey everybody, so as you're probably all aware, if you're a YouTuber and you reach 100,000 subscribers, YouTube will send you the silver play button uh, as a, a milestone marker, a token gift to congratulate you for reaching 100,000 subscribers. Now I never really imagined that I had a chance of doing this, um, although looking at the numbers at the moment it seems like it is likely that if I keep going it just might happen. Hit the subscribe if you want to help me on my way. But I always look forward to getting the award, so even when I'm an old man, I can always have that thing that's like, it's a real physical thing to show something I did in the past. And in the past, YouTube used to give you this quite nice little award. It was an actual cast metal YouTube button in a box. Looked really nice. And then they changed it to this design. And honestly, when I saw they changed it, my want to get one just reduced a bit. And I then thought... Well, why do I wait till I get to 100,000 subscribers? Why should we start a silver? Let's start with steel. And it's 78,000 subscribers because everyone else would have done it at 80. So the other day when the storms are coming through, the rain was coming down, I decided I'm going to put some time aside today and I'm going to make a YouTube play button to celebrate 78,000 subscribers. As I say, I know everyone else would have done 80,000. I just like doing it slightly differently. And I think it's kind of cool, and it's at least if I never reach 100,000, I'll always have this to look back on anyway. I'm uploading this video in two formats, as you may have noticed. One of them has narration, one of them doesn't. This one is the one with narration, and I'm going to talk you through what I did. If you'd like to see the one without narration, check out the other video on my channel. Okay, so, I printed out some little templates, as you can see I went to Google Images. Printed that in multiple so I could have a template for each thing I needed. Here's some old steel that I had sat around. This one actually practiced a, a, a pattern effect on. I've got two different thicknesses, one for the back plate, one for the button itself. Uh, as you can see, this is just old stuff and uh, it needs to be prepared. So get the sander out to try and knock down the surface. This is some old sandpaper I had uh, that I did some acrylic work, I think, with this, some resin work with. It's perfectly good sandpaper still, but as you can see, it's pretty grubby, but it does the job. Just get that in this old, old sander and then just sand the surface down. As I say, the idea of doing this 78k button is just for a bit of fun really. Um, and it's also to sort of, you know, have something that I made myself, something I can be proud of. Oh, nearly off the template there. I'm going to clean up the surface. That was the back surface, this is the front surface. I went for the better surface on the front, obviously less to deal with. Or I thought, but there were some marks left on this that I had to uh, try and get out. More sanding, lots and lots and lots of sanding. I don't really mind if there's marks on this. Obviously this is a steel play button. It's not designed to look super sleek and professional. It's kind of like, you know, your early days. You, you're a bit rough and ready, maybe. <laughs> My videos are probably still rough and ready. Uh, I didn't want to attack that pattern surface too much, but as it turns out, it was discolored a lot. And to take the uh, take that discoloration, the oxidization off, I needed to actually grind it back. Tried to do it you know, as least invasively as I could, but I ended up going back to the angle grinder. And as it turns out, I had to do that several times along the way. Just using a one mil disc to cut this out. I thought for this, most of this time, I had the smallest one mil disc. It was like, it was virtually nothing left. And I was like, well, I'm gonna have to get through this. I'm not going out in the rain. Uh, just putting some uh, sticky back plastic. <laughs> sticky back, this one's blue Peter. It's double-sided <laughs> adhesive tape uh, to the template just to hold it down. Yes, there's other ways of doing this, but this seemed to work fine. I decided to offset the the play triangle to the direction of the actual button itself, just using the offcut as a clamp to hold it in place, and again using that tiny little one mil disc, there's virtually nothing left to it. And I'm obviously just rough cutting at this point. Uh, why did I not use my new plasma cutter? Basically because it was easier to not burn everything with the templates being there by using the packing disc. Yeah, you can see that's that's all I had left and I had to try and get through it. And I tried, and I tried. And then I remembered my stainless steel only one, which has now been sacrificed. Uh, when you do TIG welding, you don't want to mix up cutting discs and grinding things that you use stainless steel and steel on because the steel will contaminate the stainless. So much easier. Now I've got a proper size disc. This is just chopping that triangle down roughly. It's very hot, grab the pliers. 
and I think I've got a third side to do as well. Yeah, just a bit, very thin slither on this side to take off. I normally don't try and cut to the exact line because I'm not that great at it, but uh, I did try it in this instance and did okay with pretty much everything apart from one thing, but maybe I won't point it out on it. You'll, if only if you notice, you'll notice. A good tip here is to um, make a very light cut first and then work your way backs and forwards and it keeps your cutting disc in the right place. Like here, I needed to make sure I didn't go beyond uh, where the, the template was, so I cut the first bit just next to it so I knew where to go and then ran the line up and down and trim that off. Right, now, why did I put the writing on it? Because basically I wanted to etch something into it. So what I went around the outside of it with the Dremel, uh, this is just a, an engraver that I signed my work with, and did the outline. Later on, I'll come back to this and go back over it, and you'll uh, you'll see why I left that till later. But basically, here I'm just going around the outlines just to give myself a, a mark for the future. I'm sure you're enjoying that noise. <laughs> okay, so trimming down a bit more. Going carefully. Very very satisfying chopping metal with. Uh, an angle grinder and a one mil disc because it just it just knife through butter I may have put a hole in my hoodie in doing this I was wearing the wrong hoodie <laughs> it happens it all sparks probably around this moment and now you can see I'm just trimming the corners off and trying to take as much material off as I possibly can with the cutting disc uh, before I go in with the grinder and actually grind down the excess. I'm also uh, cutting little depth markers right up to the edge of the uh, template, so when I do use the angle grinder I know how deeply to go. Good little tip, that helps a bit. So, so again, trimming little pieces off where I can, and then going back the other way and taking some of those teeth out. This was a, a clever little idea. For the triangle I wanted to make sure it was nice and square, so I used some offcuts of steel that I use as weights when welding. Uh, used the edge of that as a guide, clamped it in place and then did each side alternately, you know, lining up the edge of the guide with the template that was stuck to the piece of metal. Uh, it worked out really well, it gave me a nice flat edge all the way around, kind of pointlessly because I ended up welding all the way around it as you'll see. Right, now we are rounding the button itself. Obviously this video is massively reduced down, this is actually about four hours work, roughly. You know, just cleaning out all the edges, making sure there's no sharp bits, rounding it all off nicely. Again, I'm not being too proper with this, I'm not going too far, it needs to look a bit rough and ready. It's a steel play button after all. Again, cleaning up, cleaning up. I was turning it alternately, turning it alternately? Uh, to make sure that I could see what I was doing, but to try and save my back. I couldn't get down too low and there was a couple of bits that I kind of, the, the button came out much better than the, the, the plate, shall we say, but it was alright. Just uh, beveling the edges of everything basically a little bit. Right, I need a little uh, standoff post, so I used a little bit of 8mm bar, which was rusty, so I had to uh, put, pop it in the drill, use some sandpaper and get all of that off of it, and then beveled the ends to help with the, uh, the weld later. I did drill a 10mm hole, 8 or 10, the right sized hole in the two pieces of metal. Unfortunately the camera is bumped sideways and I didn't get any on that on camera. Uh, but I worked my way up through like 3.5, 4, 5, 6, 7mm, gently going up through the sizes until I got to the right size. Uh, now, because of what I want to do with that writing, I need to discolour this back plate and I also want the button and the plate to be different. Uh, this didn't go quite as well as I was hoping. Uh, this is quite a thick plate and getting this up to a really high temperature is difficult. Uh, I realised I was probably going to be stood there all day and waste £15 worth of gas trying to do that, so I got it as hot as I possibly could. I mean, it, it's hot. But then I do a little trick, uh, which is a great way of darkening down metal. Get it hot, spray it with oil, WD-40, something like that, and let it sit. And then clean it off and it really darkens the surface down. So I'm even going back over it, really heating that all in. Uh, it will create a film if you don't get it off before it fully dries. So wipe it off. And I actually use a dirty oily rag to do this uh, because it adds more into it. It seems to just nicely bring down the colour of the metal. Right, now the button itself. That was uh, 10 minutes of trying to find my T welding stuff. 
Right, so warming up the, uh, the standoff post to get that up to temperature. Before you move on to the, the thinner material, you need to heat up the thicker material so they both melt at about the same time. Otherwise you'll blow holes in the thinner stuff. Just getting a little tack to come across here and then uh, filling in with a bit of filler. Again, I'm not trying to make this flat. I knew I was going to grind it, so I'm, I'm, I was hoping, to be honest, the standoff would flatten out a little bit more, but it didn't. So filled it and then we will get the grinder out and sort that out. Uh, I always knew that it didn't really matter because I was planning to put the triangular play button over the front. But when I was cleaning it up, as you'll see in a minute, I kind of went too far in one direction because I went in the opposite direction of what I was normally doing. Uh, and I had to go back over the thing to completely correct the pattern to get rid of that mark. Okay, so now we're gonna heat up the, uh, the triangle for the play button. I wanted to get this really dark and I kind of wanted to keep the, the other plate lighter, but unfortunately with the welding that was then required, it brought everything down. But there is a, a difference in color as you'll see in the end result. But this actually look, came out really nice, really nice color. I think I'll show you a close up in a minute. Yeah, there you go. Really nice color on it. Okay, I cut out about 20 minutes of trying to get some way of getting this to hold in place, tried different small magnets and stuff, but in the end the little uh, angle adapters worked great. Little spot weld with a little bit of fill, just to get it to hold in place. Trying to get it flat, wasn't going too well. Uh, the weld as it cools down pulls, so it will pull up the other side with great force. So I uh, pinned that down using some uh, mole grips and then just got another spot weld in place. So on all three sides. And then I decided, you know what, I'm gonna fill this. So I went through and, and I welded it all up. One of these welds is one of the neatest looking welds I've done in TIG probably. Uh, so much so that the pressure of that made me uh, mess up the second one a little bit, so it was a little bit thicker. It's a little rough and ready, yes, but again, I, can think, I think it kind of fits in with this steel play button idea. Again, I darkened that down with some oil. I probably shouldn't have done that. It would have had a better contrast if I didn't. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's okay. You'll see. Again, wiping that down. And then I need to basically draw or shade in the, the numbers of what I had before. This... This is also why I darkened the metal, because I knew that when I did this, I'd bring it back to a, back to the white, as it's called, the shiny version of metal, uh, and it'll stand out much better. This could have gone neater, but then trying to do it at such a small scale was tricky. As you can see, it's okay. If you don't look too close, yeah, I was like, oh, I don't know, it's okay. Okay, so we welded the post in, now we've got some nuts to stand off, chip chop, that chops that down. Skills I know, uh, and then we weld that on top. There's a bit of time trying to make sure it was straight. Uh, you see, I'll just give it a little tack. And I thought it was, it could be slightly off, but uh, again, it's, it's close enough. Just like with the front filling going around, and then I uh, grind it down flat. The back of the thing really doesn't matter because you're not gonna see it. But there you go. You see, there is a contrast to the button where I've put that pattern in and heated it slightly differently. I say, really didn't try and do it neatly or anything. I think that fits in with the idea of the steel play button. And then I was like, well, where am I going to put it? I can't put it on the wall because I haven't put any holes in it. I didn't really want to. Uh, I didn't want to put it on like a piece of wood. And I thought, well, why not do something different and just chuck together a stand with some 6 mil mild steel rod. Great stuff, this. So, yeah. Bent the ends, chopped it down. Made a little tripod. Just welded it on the tip. It doesn't need to take a lot of, uh, a lot of weight, although I did go around and make sure it sort of flanged between the legs with a nice U keep it strong and that's basically it here you go here's the reveal I think it came out pretty cool for a for a little project as a bit of a joke YouTube play button of 78,000 subscribers because you know it's me I kind of like it I think it's kind of cool there you go if you enjoyed this video don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe if you want to help me get to 100k, and a huge thanks to my patron supporters who went up the screen earlier on. Catch you next time. Look at that. 
you enjoyed this video and the other content on the channel, please consider following the links in the description to show your support.